Buffaloes were down by 18 with 11.42 to play in the uh, first half. McKinley Wright already got out the 13.55 mark of the first half of the spring. He didn't play the rest of the half. The Buffs outscore the uh, Cougars by 18 in the second half and winning by 11. Head coach Tad Boyle uh, joining us now. Well, uh, uh, Tad, the, the first uh, seven or eight minutes uh, weren't great in this one, but boy, after that, the Buffs kind of found themselves in what a spectacular second half for your Buffaloes here today. Yeah, Mark, it was, this was a character win for our for our team and our program, and and it was definitely gut check time in that in that first half, especially when McKinley went out and you know, he bruised his knee. He he actually had done the same thing a couple of weeks ago in practice. He's been not a hundred percent on that thing, um, but he's such a tough kid and plays through pain. And he did a great job, you know, coming back. I I, I thought he was out for the game, quite frankly, when he when he went out. I didn't even ask Raleigh. Uh, and then I saw him in the locker room at halftime kind of bouncing around. And then Raleigh told me as we took the floor, he said, he's going to try to go. And I said, well, the only way I'm playing is if he's, he's not limping. And he wasn't limping. <laughs> so we, we went with him and he was, he was terrific. But I thought, you know, Eli Parquet uh, defensively tonight. I mean, the key for us was we just started guarding. I mean, uh, Noah Williams and Bonton had 26 points between them at halftime. And uh, they finished up with 11 points between them in the second half. I mean, no Williams only got three and it was a really deep three at the end of the shot clock that, you know, I thought Deshaun did a good job defending, but uh, uh, they're, they're both good players. We knew coming in, that was their kind of those guys and FA Abugidi uh, in their, in their post as uh, a good player, good freshman, you know, Washington state's young. I think their youth showed a little bit tonight, but uh, our character showed and our toughness showed and, um, Really, really proud of our guys. When McKinley went down, and, and frequently when you and I talk, and I, I say something about leadership, you're always very quick to say McKinley Wright and Evan Batty. And I, I thought when McKinley went down, Tad, Evan really stepped up. I mean, led you guys offensively. He seemed to be kind of a, a, a catalyst out there for your team. Big time. Absolutely, Mark. He, he really did. And, I, you know, I'll, I give a lot of credit to our bench tonight. You know, in these arenas when there's no fans, um, you know, it's totally different bench decorum tonight from our guys when we were struggling than we had at Washington. When we were struggling against Washington, the bench was awful quiet and heads were down and they, they were pouting like the guys on the floor. And tonight it wasn't like that. They, they really helped pick them up, but you're right. Evan emotionally when McKinley went down really kind of stepped up and, and guys fed off him. I thought Jariah Horn had great minutes tonight. Jabari Walker in the second half played terrific. I, I mentioned Eli's defense. I mean, He's becoming a hell of a shot blocker on the ball. Um, he's so athletic, and he took a big charge in the second half. McKinley took a big charge in the second half. I mean, those defensive plays, um, they're game-winning plays, quite frankly. Yeah. And, and, uh, and we just kept stringing stops together. I mentioned kills. You know, uh, we had zero in the second half against Washington. Tonight we had five in the second half against Washington State, and, mm -hmm. you know, we win the game going away. So it just yeah. kind of – those things kind of take care of themselves if you just – We'll, we'll, we'll pay attention to that. Quick comment about, about McKinley. I, I, I said it, it wasn't quite a Willis Reed moment when he walked back out there, but under the circumstances for him to come out and, you know, I think uh, by the time it was all sitting down in a second, he had 12 points, seven rebounds, four assists, uh, including a block shot, the charge you're talking about in the second half. I mean, that, that's pretty special stuff from a special player right there. Yeah, he's a gritty kid. And, you know, obviously we talk about him a lot. And, um, you know, the one thing, I hope CU fans aren't taking him for granted. Enjoy, enjoy him the rest of this year because uh, I don't know if we'll have another one like him for, for quite some time. We'll see. I mean, I hope yeah. we, I hope we will. We got some talented freshmen, but just McKinley's leadership and his toughness and all the things that he brings to the table, outside of his ability to pass, shoot, rebound, score. <laughs> you know, he's a he's a terrific, terrific player and. One of the all-time greats in Colorado history. Yeah, without question. Ted, one thing before we let you go here and get to the the match media, uh, you've got kind of a unique situation here. Uh, you're yeah. going to come back home and play Washington State on Wednesday night at the event center. Well, listen, we just experienced playing Washington for the second time. And we talked about it before the game. They have the, the emotional edge go, went to Washington. And guess what? They they took advantage of that edge. We, we didn't meet the uh, rink. We didn't answer the bell, so to speak. We've got to answer the bell against Washington State. Uh, we played 25 minutes of pretty good basketball tonight. We need 40 in Boulder on Wednesday. They'll make some adjustments that, you know, uh, the luster is kind of off and their kids are 
are competitors and they want to win and they want to play. Uh, they want to score. So we, we got to have a, another defensive effort from the beginning to the end. Again, they've got good players. Noah Williams can make tough shots. Yeah. Isaac Bonton can make tough shots. We got to make sure they are tough and we're not giving them easy ones. And um, I thought we did a good job of that in the second half tonight. Yeah. Well, congratulations, Tan. Safe travels. We'll see you back in Boulder. Thank you. All right. That's Okay, we'll uh, uh, start with uh, Jacob Toby for a uh, question for Coach. Coach, for for lack of a better phrasing, did you sense like a like a pissed off feeling from your team after McKinley goes out? You guys were down by as many as you were down. Did you just sense like a like a pissed off feeling from your team after that? After that, not point? really, Jacob. I, you know, I, I I definitely sensed a uh, okay. This is it's it's time to put up or shut up. You know, it's like this, okay, let's see what we're made of. We all know how important McKinley is to us in a lot of different ways. But, you know, Mark had mentioned, you know, Evan really stepped his game up and his talk and his energy level. And I think the rest of the guys fed off of Evan's energy. Um, so, yeah, I, I, I think our guys learned a lot about themselves tonight. McKinley went down and we, we cut it from an 18-point deficit to a seven-point deficit at halftime. We talked about stringing stops together, you know, so – two, three possession game, we're, we're, we're right there. And, and we, we, we dug ourselves out of that hole one possession at a time. We didn't panic. We didn't try to, you know, uh, come back all at once. You can't do that. You just got to do it possession by possession by possession. Our guys did a good job of that. So I think we bowed our back. I don't know if I would consider it a pissed off moment. It was just more of, okay, it's time for us to step up and, and see what we're made of. And, and, and they, again, they answered the bell. Hey, Coach. Um, you know, you and I just talked the other day about getting the defense right uh, after the Washington game. Uh, obviously, it, it got corrected as this game went on. Uh, but what was happening early? It looked uh, like more of the same from uh, yeah. from the Washington game. Yeah, I think, uh, look, at some point as a coach, uh, you can only talk so much. You know, you can only watch so much film. You can only uh, – all you can do is help prepare your guys. Um, for the scouting report, for what they're going to be facing on on the defensive end uh, when when Washington State has the ball, and and then it's up to the players to execute. and And I give them credit when they do. Um, and but there also has to be res responsibility, individual responsibility. And that's one of the things we talked about at one of our timeouts. And Ev Evan was really vocal, like we we've got to individually take a little bit more pride defensively. And uh, if, if we do that individually, it will happen collectively. But when you got two or three guys that take it serious and two or three guys that don't, that collective, you know, because uh, defense is a team thing. I mentioned McKinley's charge. I mentioned Eli's charge. I don't know who got beat on the drives when those two kids took their charges in the second half, but somebody got beat. <laughs> you know, I'll see it. I'll watch film and I'll see who got beat. And we'll talk about guarding the ball better. But the whole key is when guys break down, we front the post. We were switching. We front uh, F.A. Abugidi. We front Deshaun Jackson. They're big 6'11", 7-foot guys. We've got to trust that we're going to have help side. We're going to have ball pressure. And, and that's the team defense that you have to show uh, to beat good teams and to, uh, to have, have, have success against good players. Hey, Devin, go ahead. Hey, Coach, what can you say about the uh, bench production tonight? You know, Keyshawn had to come in a little bit in the first half for McKinley Wright, and then Jabari Walker came up with some big plays on that run late in the second half. So what can you say about your benches? Yeah, and I throw Jariah Horn in there tonight because he came off the bench. You know, uh, Jariah and Dallas, I talked to them. Uh, you know, we're going to basically – I look at like we got six starters, and Dallas will start against teams that start two bigs like Washington State did tonight. Uh Jariah will, will probably start against teams that have a traditional four-man pick-and-pop guy uh, where we're switching. Um, Evan, you can plug him in a lot of different spots defensively, but, you know, Dallas has a skill set both offensively and defensively. Jariah's got a skill set both offensively and defensively. They're different players, though, so it allows us to match up with other teams, and um, that's how we're going to kind of handle it as, as a year uh uh, moves on. But yeah, I thought, yeah, Jariah, Jabari, Keyshawn. I thought Dominique Clifford, I know, 
you know, the stats don't show it, but, you know, he, he got thrown in there as a freshman in a, in a tough situation. And um, he's going to be a good player. He, he's, he's long, he's athletic and um, great learning moments for him tonight. So bench was, bench was terrific. Okay. Justin Guerrero. Ted, when, when you look at the, the the comeback you guys had in the first half, um, going from an 18 point deficit to getting it to within uh, seven by halftime, all without McKinley Wright, I mean, is that maybe kind of a little glimpse into the future? I mean, tonight you had to figure out a way to hang around without McKinley, and of course he's he's gone after this year. Next year is starting next year. You're going to have to figure out a way to do maybe just that with without him on a regular basis. Absolutely. And I, I've mentioned, you know, next year's next year. I'm not going to start thinking about that now, but I, I, but I, but I understand what you're saying, Justin, it's, there's no question it's there. Uh, we all know it. Um, it's just, I'm going to enjoy the rest of this year and, and try to squeeze as much out of this team as we can. Cause I think we have a chance to be really special. And, uh, but yeah, coming back without McKinley should give everybody a boost of confidence. Cause sometimes you know, our guys look to him and if he's not playing well or he's not, you know, having his best game, uh, they need to understand he needs help, too. You know, it's uh, we kill. has got a lot of responsibility on his plate and, and, and on his shoulders. And I I want the rest of the guys to help alleviate some of that so that he doesn't feel like he has to be great every night and, and make every play. And we because we've got multiple playmakers, Deshaun can, Evan can, Jariah. I thought Jariah made a really good play uh, in that zone, against the zone in, in the second half where he found McKinley on a skip and then McKinley got the one more to Maddox for a three. It's good to see Maddox hit a couple threes there in the second half. We need him to make shots because uh, he's a he's a very good shooter. So um, hopefully we can start getting hot a little bit from three <laughs> like, uh, you know, Washington State did in that first half and Washington did against us the, the other night. It's Hopefully those tides will turn for us. Okay, um, we'll wrap it up. One more from Pat Rudy. Hey, Coach, if you don't mind looking ahead a little bit, I know you mentioned uh, the rematch against Washington State coming up here this week. Uh, you've got basically five games now with the rescheduled game, five games at home uh, over the next two weeks. Uh, I, I know you can only play them one at a time, but uh, how crucial is this stretch for you guys to uh, be where you want to be at the end of the season? It's big time crucial because, you know, we're going to finish the game with four road games for four, finish the season with four road games. We know that. So uh, I'm just, you know, again, keeping fingers crossed, we can get all 20 in. And if we do, um, you know, we're going to have to finish strong and, and, and win some games in a row. We've, you know, right now we've played six road games in the league. We've got four road games left. And, but yeah, you, like you said, the next five are at home, but that doesn't mean anything if we don't, figure out how to beat Washington State on Wednesday. So that's the task at hand. And we know the schedule is what the schedule is. And you can't control that. So we don't worry about it. But we are aware of it. Our players, uh, if they're not aware of it, they'll become aware of it. And, but we cannot take playing at home for granted uh, in, in no way, shape, or form. 